I'm in South and I saw Ex Machina. It is directed by Alex Garland. He wrote 28 Days Later and also directed Men as well. This was a movie request by a Patreoni. If you'd like to fast track a movie request, you can go to patreon.com slash Presents. My exposure to this movie previously was none. Except for, I've heard the name a lot, but I wasn't exactly sure what this movie was about, so I got really excited that this movie was requested. So if you haven't seen this movie, I will spoil it for you. The movie starts, we're meeting a guy named Caleb, he won a contest, he's going somewhere, he won, he's in an office, and now he's in a helicopter, uh, helicoptering about, he's... Uh, he's like, oh, where's the estate? Oh, we've been at the estate for two hours, it says the helicopter pilot. And I'm like, man, this must be a really rich man. This must be a person with a lot of money, especially if he's employing programmers. Apparently this is a, he's a top honcho programmer. But it's, I digress. What does good, though, is that he arrives, and then he's supposed to just walk into forest the entire area around this what seems to be this like very narrow building that even like gives him a key pass hey you're allowed to go into this key pass okay I go into this house and although there's a guy there well it takes a little bit of searching on his end he just walks through oh yeah this is a very nice area and then he sees a guy and I'm like whoa that is that is the rich man himself, that is boss man. You're meeting your boss. That is a cool opportunity. And I'm like, man, this is awesome. I would uh, I would be totally down. I love this per person's house. But the programmer is like, yeah, okay, cool. Uh, you're, you're pretty rad. I'm feeling a little bit weird. But you know, I'm just a l lowly programmer. But also there's a fact that, hey, hey, could you come check this out? I want to tell you a thing or two about uh, things that I've been making, but you have to sign an NDA first. And of course, Caleb's like, oh no, NDAs shouldn't exist. I need my lawyer, because the NDA specifically says that he's allowed to search anyone's property, and search any of your digital property, physical, to see if you've breached an NDA, and I'm just like, man, I mean, I... I just don't tell anyone about this. What's so hard about not speaking? If you get to learn something really cool. But, you know, the mil billionaire guy, he's like, all right, well, uh, it's, you, you can't sign out. You cannot uh, know what's gonna happen. But within a year, you're gonna, you're gonna miss out. And this encourages Caleb to sign the NDA. You gotta go sign it. All right, cool. We're gonna, I'm gonna show you this cool thing. I'm working with AI. Do you know the Turing test? Yes, yeah, it's a Turing test. See if a uh, human can t tell if an AI is uh, an AI or a human. And I'm also excited. I'm like, whoa, we get to uh, get into a weird uncanny valley with seeing AI. I'm down. All right, Caleb, you go talk to the AI. Hello, I am Caleb. I am programmer. H hello, how are you? And he asks the AI a bunch of questions. He has a bunch of questions himself. He goes to the billionaire guy, and he's like, Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to think of it, like, if there's like a, a closed loop in the way that it thinks, you know? And yeah, he's like, billionaire guy's like, Oh, you just gotta, you just gotta, um, hmm, uh, just, just listen to what she thinks about you. And I'm like, okay, this isn't the angle that I was thinking was gonna happen. But I'm also in very interested to see the, the thought experiments that the billionaire guy is taking this programmer guy too because honestly just to experience AI it must be really fascinating but uh oh there's a couple of sessions oh, I should also mention that this AI her name is Ava she's a female AI there's a bunch of power surges and she's like don't trust the billionaire guy and you know what happens the pro uh, the Caleb's like you know what I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna say any of this to the billionaire guy. I'm just gonna like, oh, nothing. You said nothing over dinner. And I'm just like, first of all, breach of trust number one. Why would you not tell him about the machine that he made? Wants to escape is telling me not to trust you. I personally would just be like, hey, dude, your machine is telling me not to trust you. Okay, because it's, 
I know you're forming some sort of friendship, you're a lonely guy, Caleb, but gee, like, you're really gonna trust an AI over a guy who built the AI? Oh, look, there's this other lady that's there, and he's, uh, the billionaire is being kind of mean to it, and I feel bad for her, kind of. At the same time, she doesn't really understand the any language except for whatever her language is. I don't know. It's very unclear. But there's more sessions with Ava. Caleb gets a deeper friendship. There's a lot of more power surges. Hey, says Ava. Do you love me? Well, not like love me, but do you? Are you attracted to me, Caleb? He seems insecure. That's what that was my read on it. He seems a little bit insecure. And so when the billionaire guy's like, yeah, she has a... She's an opening between her legs with a sensory. You could have sex with it. Caleb's like, Is spaghetti out of my mouth? No, I do not want to have sex with her. But I'm like, maybe you do, Caleb. You're looking like you're a little bit attracted to the robot there. That's what I'm reading. You got the micro expressions that Ava's like, Oh, you seem attracted. Oh, you seem discomforted. Ugh. And I'm like, I wouldn't have picked up on the micro expressions. But now that you mentioned micro expressions, your micro expressions, Ava seems a little bit angered when you have Caleb denying you. There's also a power surge. Oh, I think, I think Billy Ritter guys uh, is listening to us the entire time. But then you, you pose that, Caleb. And then the next power surge, you're like, well, actually, I want to help you escape, Ava. After snooping around, just being like, huh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take your, uh, your key card, billionaire guy. I'm gonna go into your room. Oh, there's a bunch of clo- there's like a few closets full of like five androids. Oh no, you're enslaving them. Ah, oh no. When I saw this scene, I was like, man, I'm glad he's not enslaving real people. I'm glad he like made a bunch of robots. He's just kind of an isolated guy who has a bunch of time and money. And he's just like a, he's a, he's, he's a genius. He's made AI. And so I'm just thinking, man, I wouldn't think that I'm smarter than this guy at this point. However, we have Caleb after he notices the closet, the closets or the boxes, wherever they came from of the AI, he just goes to a room and slits his wrist down, vertically down his arm. And I'm just like, dude, are you trying to rip yourself apart? It was at this point where I was going from, yeah, Caleb is a Caleb is a smart guy to like uh, ask the correct questions about the AI, see if it's a human. To now you're just trying to open your arm and punch the mirror, dude. I've lost faith in you, Caleb. At this point, I'm like, dude, okay. You're, you're, you're crazy. I would have not done that. I would, I honestly, if I was in his position, I was just like, oh, he has built five robots. He's built six robots. Obviously, there's going to be a bunch of prototypes. He even asks, uh, Caleb even asks the billionaire guy, hey, what do you do with the, what do you do with the, 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 the robots that are done? Oh, I just reused their body. I download their brain. I reprogram. And I feel like... Caleb thinks this is a bad thing, and I'm like, no, it's not. A, it's clearly not a bad thing. It's it's how you make androids AI. It's how you make redo machines and all of that jazz. You should know, guy. But he's like, no, I'm attached to the robot. The robot wants to escape. The robot wants to know her fate. If I don't let her escape, okay, well you're gonna get replaced. Please help me escape, okay? And of course, I just absolutely love that the billionaire is like, hey, I'm sober. I'm sober now. I used to be a big old drinker. And you're gonna try to help the the robot escape, yes? Uh, how did you know? I left the camera. You had the suspect, you had the suspicion that maybe you're being listened to. That was correct. Why did you not assume that other places, you're not gonna try to, you're, he, I, I, I feel like my brain is melting because he he has said that he thinks that the billionaire billionaire guy is listening but he also wants to hide the fact that he's going to try to help the guy help the AI escape 
and wow, the the billionaire not, billionaire guy was listening the entire time. What? That was very surprising. But what a surprise! He knew that Caleb was trying to get him, trying to take Ava, and that was the actual ultimate test. I'm like, man, that is so big brain. It's really fun to not have Caleb uh, know that this was the test the entire time, is to see if Ava was going to manipulate and lie and try to use sexuality to escape, and she did. And although I think, even though the billionaire guy is much smarter than, than Caleb, it seems, I also think that he's incredibly stupid and underestimated Caleb when he's like, yeah, uh, this wasn't entirely a test. And Caleb's like, hey, when you were drunk last night, I reprogrammed it, the lockdown procedure. So when it goes locked down, the doors don't lock. And so now Ava has a chance to lock. When she locks down the place, she escapes. Uh-oh, she looks like she's uh, yearning for some sweet, sweet revenge. She talks to another of the A, uh, well, I don't know if that one, I don't know if the assistant was an AI. She's at least an android. But uh oh, you know, the billionaire guy's like, oh, I'm gonna come to you guys. And of course, he does not suspect a thing that the android, the assistant android that he's being mean to earlier, was gonna uh, backstab her him. Was gonna backstab him right as uh, he is like dealing with Ava dragging her by her feet. And I'm like, why didn't you look back behind you? You're just gonna like let yourself be stabbed and then stabbed again, and then you're gonna bleed to death. And then Caleb's gonna be left there as Ava walks off. Well, first of all, she's like, stay there, okay? I'm gonna peel off all my skin. I'm gonna peel off all the skin off of this one android. I'm gonna become human. Ava becomes human, don't you know? And then she walks off without Caleb and then gets picked up by the helicopter. I'm like, how does the helicopter not suspect the thing? What did he think was gonna happen? Oh, there is this male that's going to this billionaire's uh, estate and he comes back. The, the operation was a gender swap transition. I will not pay any mind. I will just lift this human and let her explore, exploit, explore the world. And I'm just like, at this point, I'm just mad at Kayla for being so dumb, but I'm actually just more angry at Ava at this point, because it's like, I don't know what your intentions are. I know you want to, like, look at colors. There's a whole story that Caleb tells you, oh yeah, there's a, there's a, there's a tale of the girl being who knows everything about colors, but as she's in, stuck in a black and white box. Ooh, I'm like, oh, that's gonna be the, that's gonna be Ava in the end. But you know, what's great about this though is I just absolutely love that Ava gets to see color, but also she is a murderer. She is, she might as well be a bad person. She's a bad person who has murdered and abandoned somebody at this estate and is just now Roman free. She might as well be a person. So, ah. Oh man, also Caleb's like, oh, I'm a good person. No, you're not. You big liar. You, 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 you assumed that the billionaire guy was in the wrong. Billionaire guy's name is Nathan, by the way. You, you just wanted to be like two dudes, you know? And you assumed that he was up to no good. And in the end, he ended up getting stabbed. So I'm very mad at Caleb, but also he gets what he deserves. He's stuck in the estate now with the rotting corpse of Nathan. And how will he get out? I'm not sure. That's how the movie ends. I really enjoyed the character progression of Ava. She uses the ability to manipulate to try to get out. I honestly was like, oh, she... I started to underestimate her when Caleb was first talking to her. But as more and more of the movie went on and she was actually able to escape, I was like, oh, I probably shouldn't underestimate people. Um, I shouldn't underestimate Caleb if I was a billionaire and I shouldn't underestimate the billionaire if I was Caleb So you know what this is a ultimate lesson and do not underestimate people Because that would lend end to your doom Also, don't treat AIs badly or else they're going to backstab you. It was also the lesson that I learned the colors 
So beautiful. I do remember a good strong transitions from like a red room. And then, oh, there's a now, the next cut is bam, green. And then like a lot of the, a lot of the colors were very moody. Like the entire inside was kind of a, was like kind of like a concrete marbly color. It's kind of like stale, but there's some nature outside. And now we get to see from like the, the pale walls to all the colorful outside that G Ava gets to explore. And I'm just like, that's terrifying. What are her intentions? Maybe she'll see that some parts of humanity is bad and try to eliminate every part of humanity. Or maybe she just wants to touch grass and only wants to touch grass. And please just keep it that way, Ava. Just want to touch grass, please. Uh, please do not have bigger aspirations for human conquering or something. Yeah, this movie just kind of messed with my head. More, mainly because I'm like, what are your intentions, Ava? And what were the intentions of Caleb? How is he going to help Ava escape? What was he going to think he was going to do? Sleep with her? Ha have a loving relationship with an AI? I don't know what his plan was, but he wasn't thinking of it through. And I honestly think that the billionaire guy was was definitely thinking his things through, but didn't stop to consider that maybe Kayla would try to s sabotage him. All around, this movie entirely full of distrust. And I'm glad that everyone gets what they deserve. I do recommend just like watching this movie for yourself though, if you haven't seen it already. Because I gotta give this movie a solid 7.8 out of 10. If you like this review, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and share this video with everyone you know. The ultimate goal of this channel is for me to become an expert movie reviewer, so if I haven't reviewed it on the channel, there's a chance I haven't even seen it at all, you can request a movie in the comments below. You can fast track the request. Patreon.com slash ASC presents for $20 a month for one movie review per one month, $3 a month for some daily vlogs, all at Patreon.com slash ASC presents. And if you'd, if you'd like to help support the daily grindiness of these movie reviews, you can go to this link tree for some NSFW content for some daily sets. It really helps with the daily grindiness of all the movies. So go here until next time I'm in Sad Saw. I'll see you later, my Sad Crew Sons Bits.